The Blair Witch Project was a horror film released in 1999, and for those of us without the luxury of having seen Cannibal Holocaust, it codified the found footage style of filmmaking. It was also shit. Alongside its other sterling accomplishment, note singular, The Blair Witch Project featured 75 minutes of a bunch of asshole teenagers getting themselves lost in the woods while discovering innovative new ways to be complete fucking tools, all with worse cinematography than a Jason Bourne movie being projected onto a screen made of lemon-flavored jello. The sole redeeming quality of the movie was the last five minutes, when it finally decided to stop being a documentary on the daily lives of the three biggest douchebags in the universe and have some actual content. The big questions one could ask of a Blair Witch film in 2016 are A. Is it better than Book of Shadows? And B. Has it learned from the many mistakes of the first installment? To answer those questions, yes, of course it's better than Book of Shadows, but fucking kidney stones are better than Book of Shadows, so that doesn't say much. As for having buffed out the dents and accepted responsibility for its shortcomings, Blair Witch opts instead to pull a Star Wars and literally just make the first movie again, except instead of three jackass college freshmen running around in the forest getting progressively more insufferable, we now have six of the obnoxious little dipshits to keep track of. And don't think I'm exaggerating, this is horror movie land after all, consistently being home to the dumbest motherfuckers on planet Earth, and Blair Witch is no exception. This includes the kinds of characters whose first instinct in a tense situation is to pick up a camera and start recording rather than do literally anything to even remotely increase their survivability. In fact, why don't we just go down the whole list of shitty horror movie character archetypes? We've got the skeptical character who still goes along with everything despite having an infinite number of better things to do with his time. We've got the guy whose overzealous pursuit of something completely trivial constantly puts his companions in mortal danger, and yet at the same time, they never actually call him out on his bullshit. We've got the character who, even after sustaining massive physical trauma, still decides to do something strenuous which ultimately leads to their demise. We've got the non-specific pagan weirdos whose unconditional love for the antagonist ends up getting them killed. Lastly, despite the clear and ever-present danger, our precious protagonists still manage to go out of their way to constantly just be complete assholes to each other. And the golden star atop what might be the world's most generic Christmas tree is that the black guy actually dies first. Seriously, this actually happens in a non-parody movie in 2016. That trope is literally nothing but self-parody nowadays. Day of the Dead was making fun of that cliche back in 2004. Hell, Romero was making fun of it before it even existed. So being on a narrative level ugly as sin and only half as entertaining, the least Blair Witch could do is be better than its predecessor on a technical level. It could be, but it isn't. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that it's somehow even worse. Not only is the shaky camera movement as nauseating as ever, but the sheer amount of brutality our shithead protagonists exhibit towards their camera equipment made Blair Witch one of the most unpleasant viewing experiences I've had in quite a while. Every scene transition is presented in the form of a smash cut, complete with loud noises and wild camera flails, so all I could see every time the camera started rolling was some dipshit teenager smashing their face against the record button. The only marketable difference between Blair Witch and its 99 cousin is that due to typical Hollywood advancements in how much money a film can fit on screen at a given time, the witch has seriously stepped up her game. Instead of one creepy stick figure, there's a bajillion of them, and instead of just vaguely defined witchcraft, this time Blair decides she wants to unleash the fucking horde. So every now and then, the tyrant from Resident Evil 3, or the Ing Smasher, or the Flying Spaghetti Monster, or whatever the hell it actually ended up being, shows up to knock down a few trees, kill off a character or two, and keep up a constant source of tension. A source of tension that is immediately voiced thanks to the awful filmmaking, where the overuse of those low singular bass notes would suggest that Pyramid Head or whatever the fuck it was is lugging around his own set of subwoofers, or when the microphone peaks and the audio becomes distorted but the background noise doesn't change. Maybe I am taking to this from too much of a technical aspect, but there's nothing that kills a horror movie, especially one claiming to be pieced together from real footage, than the kind of badness that can only be achieved in post-production. And that's the biggest problem here. Found footage movies are a fucking joke. The very nature of the genre, where a third party is editing footage they didn't record, presumably for some kind of reason, ensures that if there's something that isn't relevant to the main premise, you can leave it out. You don't even have to explain why. You can just say, oh, well, we couldn't find the footage. Even if it's short, it should still theoretically be a perfectly executed film because you have free reign to cut out literally anything boring or irrelevant and being able to splice multiple takes together under the guise of visual glitches means the acting should be no less than flawless since you can specifically use the best parts of any text. But instead, we get a bunch of bullshit, like shots of the characters waking up, or testing their equipment, or an extended shot of a dude pissing, all the while asking the future editor to cut the shot out. The camera's on your fucking person, dude! You have complete control over what is being recorded, so if you don't want people to see your fucking stream, just stop filming! And while we're at it, since the pissing scene had no bearing at all on anything else in the movie, its inclusion by whoever is supposedly compiling all this found footage is just doing it to be a dick. But the kids are all dead 
dead anyway, so what's the fucking point? There is, however, a catch to all this. The same begrudging compliment I gave the original film still basically applies to this one. The last 15 minutes or so of Blair Witch are actually pretty damn good. The set design and narrative subversion are fantastic, but instead of making a good movie great, it just makes a bad movie more of a disappointment. Granted, Blair Witch is still better than tripe like The Gallows or The Visit or those godforsaken paranormal activity sequels, mainly by virtue of not having a bunch of fucking children running around, but that's pretty much the most I can say of a horror movie where I wasn't scared, and the only part where I was was ripped straight from other better horror films. At this juncture, found footage movies are a fucking joke, and until we get enough wholly unnecessary remakes and sequels under our belts to become the new norm, it's gonna continue to not be funny. Hey.